Thank you, Senator Xenophon. Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Uh, I too rise to give uh, support to this bill and, and, and uh, credit to the government for, for bringing it forward. It, uh, it helps uh, conclude a process that has almost uh, lasted a decade now. Uh, uh, the um, then Treasurer Peter Costello uh, 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 sent um, an inquiry to the Productivity Commission in 2006 to look at Australia's consumer law, and that inquiry came back with a recommendation to establish unfair contract terms. Uh, the, by the time that inquiry was considered by the government, there was a new government, there was a Labor government, and those recommendations, some of which were included in changes to the then Trade Practices Act in 2010, and indeed the Trade Practices Act became the Competition and Consumer Act at the time. But there was one crucial aspect that was missed, one crucial aspect that was missed uh, when the then Labor government moved our consumer law from the Trade Practices Act to the Australian to the Competition and Consumer Act and introduced unfair contract terms. The unfair contract terms did not apply, uh, the new unfair contract terms that is, did not apply uh, to small businesses. And my view uh, is that for many small businesses, uh, uh, in their dealings with larger businesses, they are not dissimilar uh, in terms of ability to negotiate, in terms of ability to get across detail and understand as consumers. Small businesses are very much like consumers when they have to go and negotiate with a larger uh, business and therefore deserve protections similar and, and, and close to uh, that which exists uh, for consumers. And, that is something that's always been reflected, or not always, I should say, but is reflected in our existing competition law, or at least as it existed uh, before this review occurred. We have unconscionable conduct uh, provisions in our current competition law, which apply to consumers and small businesses alike. And indeed, those unconscionable conduct uh, provisions have been used by the ACCC recently uh, to take action against Coles in particular uh, in some of uh, its. Its, uh, its unconscionable uh, practices vis-à-vis -vis small businesses. So if those, if, if, if those that may argue that unfair contract terms should not apply to small businesses, and the Labor Party did argue that when they introduced these changes a few years ago, um, they have to ask why do, we, why do we have a situation where unconscionable conduct laws apply to small businesses as well? And if they didn't apply to small businesses, the ACCC would not have been able to take action against Coles last year in the federal court. Uh, and uh, we would not have had the outcome where finally I think we're getting a bit of a response uh, by some of the supermarkets uh, to change some of their practices which have clearly, uh, clearly uh, been inappropriate and now found to be uh, unconscionable under our competition laws. So this, this piece of legislation finishes a process. It finishes a process that's been a decade long and extends unfair contract terms uh, to uh, consumers. And I'd like to just take a little while to explain why we should have unfair contract terms at all, uh, including uh, for uh, consumers. Well, there, is a f there are a few reasons. There are a few reasons why uh, we needed to update our law to include unfair contract terms. The first is uh, that products and services in our economy have become increasingly complex, uh, that uh, the average consumer now will probably sign up to hundreds of pages of legal contract and legalese in their daily life uh, each year, uh, a case that perhaps probably didn't exist decades ago. Anybody who uses the internet or a computer will often be uh, uh, subject to having to agree uh, to large uh, legal contracts re usually relating to end-user licence agreements. Anyone who buys a mobile phone, likewise, will have large contracts that are complex uh, and full of detail that av average consumers and, indeed, small businesses may find it difficult to get across. Most of us, of course, I'll put myself in this bucket, most of us sign these things uh, without reading perhaps a word uh, and certainly not reading the entire contract. Uh, and so it's easy, it is easy for larger business with teams of lawyers uh, to potentially slip things through uh, which are clearly unfair and clearly a reasonable uh, consumer would not sign up with if they had the time and the wherewithal to be able to get across these things. That's the principal reason. The other reason, though, is simply to reflect that there are an imbalance in, in negotiating positions and power between larger and smaller entities, and that gives rise to the possibility uh, that uh, that relationship can be abused to implement unfair uh, arrangements. And that can be ultimately counterproductive to the wider 
uh, creation of those relationships and market exchange because we want to encourage people to come into those arrangements with a confidence that they will be protected against unfair practices and protected against those unfair practices without having to uh, be, uh, be on their watch all the time or have to go to lawyers or bankers or other people or other agents to help them deal with every uh, little mundane purchase in modern life. So, Having a law that provides this protection will allow consumers to have confidence or more confidence in the transactions that they enter into uh, and, indeed, now after this law passes, that small businesses as well will have that confidence to enter into uh, contracts without getting um, um, uh, subject to uh, abuse. Now, the other, the other reason uh, we, these, these um, uh, laws uh, should, be, uh, should be expanded upon is that uh, legal action in Australia has become increasingly costly, and, and I support the comments that Senator Xenophon made just before me, uh, that access to justice is a real issue in competition law as it stands at the moment. Uh, but it doesn't just relate to Section 46 uh, or, uh, or other provisions of the Competition Act. It also relates to the unconscionable conduct provisions as well. And there are great similarities between unfair contract terms uh, and unconscionable conduct as well that many things that would be unfair uh, would be unconscionable as well. Unconscionable generally is provided to be taking advantage of a relationship in an unreasonable way, and, and many of the terms in this bill go towards uh, whether or not a larger business has, uh, has, has used their, their power uh, to insert uh, obligations on contractors that would be unreasonable or perhaps unconscionable. So that does give rise to the question, why do we need this law additional? to the unconscionable conduct provisions we already have. And that primarily goes to the fact that it has become extremely costly uh, to take an unconscionable conduct case. Indeed, it's extremely rare that a small business or a consumer would actually uh, do so. Uh, we have had the ACCC, and I give credit to uh, Mr Rod Sims as uh, the chair of the ACCC, uh, be uh, a little more uh, uh, assertive in taking those cases uh, to uh, to, to the federal court or to, to litigation, and that has had some, uh, I, I believe, uh, beneficial impact on, 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 on the use of unconscionable conduct. But it's still the case that now, as it stands, almost primarily, uh, there is a need for the ACCC to be involved to take any kind of action on un unconscionable matter. matter. As I said, they did do that last year in regards to Coles, um, uh, where there was conduct that was clearly, clearly in breach of um, any proper standard of conduct, but it is a costly process and it's one they can't replicate over and over. And so I believe we need these, these laws because unfair contract term laws are more definitive, uh, less subject to uh, detailed debate, lit litigation debate, and therefore likely to be able to be implemented and acted upon by regulators and private individuals alike uh, at a much more cheaper cost and hopefully develop a much more detailed law. And I, I, I want to just spend a little time on why the issues around unconscionable slash unfair conduct remain, uh, remain very live in the context of the case last year against Coles. I mean, it is often uh, perhaps put that well, if a business is acting in a way that's unfair or, or indeed unconscionable, then the particular uh, customer uh, or business uh, partner should leave that relationship and go choose a different uh, path. The problem with that, the problem with that analysis, is it doesn't take account of the fact that often small businesses and consumers have little choice in contracting with larger businesses, and those those power relationships were played out very clearly last year in that federal court case in regards uh, to Coles, because in that case uh, it became revealed the ACCC. Uh, used its investigatory and subpoena powers to, to obtain documents, internal documents from Coles, uh, that revealed conduct that I think every Australian would find contemptible. Unfortunately, senior managers at Coles uh, uh, appeared to be engaged in a common practice of, uh, of demanding uh, 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 extra contractual payments uh, from their suppliers uh, to meet certain revenue, internal revenue targets. So, for example, there was a case involving a, a um, household goods supplier 
uh, where that supply was emailed uh, a, uh, a request from their Coles uh, buyer uh, that you need to pay us. I think it was a sum of just over $200,000 by uh, the end of the week, or we may not have a relationship next year. Now, uh, that is very sharp commercial practice, but I would also suggest that it's actually quite unconscionable to be demanding uh, from a business partner, partner a payment that is completely outside of the contract, that doesn't rely on any particular breach of the contract by the supplier, uh, but is simply an, a, a, a use and, I would say, abuse of the particular power that a large uh, business has over a smaller uh, one. So I give credit to the ACCC that they are able to take a case of that kind and bring that conduct to light. Now, the fact that it has been brought to light, and it was brought to light only because the ACCC could use its uh, uh, powers to subpoena documents from Coles, does indicate to me that there is, I'm sure, other behaviour that goes unreported and unnoticed uh, that, lo that similarly uh, would be unconscionable or unfair. And we should have laws in place that allow uh, private individuals and actors to help to bring a spotlight to uh, the, the, that particular conduct and make sure it's not a common practice in our marketplace because it would undermine confidence across the broader business and consumer sector if it was. And that's what this law uh, will help to achieve because by expanding, by expanding the law uh, to small businesses, uh, 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 I hope uh, that we can create the conditions where the law will be used more. While, a law, while unfair contract terms only applies to consumers, there are limits on how much action, court action uh, uh, claims that will be made under this piece of legislation, because consumers generally, of course, uh, only uh, have smaller transactions and only have at risk a smaller amount of money in any particular dealings they have with larger businesses. So uh, if there is some type of unfair conduct, and I myself have sometimes felt that some of the uh, contracts I've had with mobile phone companies and others haven't exactly gone the way I thought they should and maybe are unfair. But I personally would not have the incentive to take action on those things. I would generally just walk away, put it down to experience, put it down to the school of hard knocks and move on with my life because it's just not worth my hassle having to, to take up. But if everybody was like that, if everybody's like that, there is no discipline in the marketplace against such conduct. And that's why expanding this law to include small business contracts as well will hopefully provide a different group of participants in the marketplace uh, that opportunity uh, and a group in the marketplace that have a greater incentive uh, to use this law and take action accordingly if there are any issues. Uh, because obviously small businesses will sign contracts that are generally larger uh, than consumers, notwithstanding the fact that they often find themselves in the same powerless position as consumers themselves. Now that gives rise to uh, what should we define as a small business and, and how we should uh, quarantine this only to those uh, participants in the marketplace that are in that find themselves in that position. Now, I think I'm told, and I might be wrong on this, but I believe there's something like 19 different definitions of, of a small business in Commonwealth legislation. Uh, and I realise that that's uh, perhaps not ideal, but uh, sometimes life is messy. And this is a little bit, uh, 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 you've got to sometimes define the, 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 uh, uh, the, the small business uh, parameters in accordance with what you're trying to achieve in this law. So I can understand why in this law the government has chosen the 20 employee uh, limit, which is a common definition as it stands, and also then used a, a contractual value amount uh, to limit its scope. Uh, to certain contracts under a, under, under a financial amount. Uh, there are always then, of course, once you make any definition and draw any boundaries, potentially to be, be exceptions beyond those boundaries uh, that, uh, that look anom anom anomalous. And I note uh, Senator Xenophon raising earlier the, the issues around perhaps uh, participants in the banking sector who, who may be very small companies but nonetheless deal with very large and sophisticated contracts. I, so I would make two points to that. Number one, it is the case that this legislation only applies to what is known as standard form uh, contracts. Uh, so if those businesses are entering into complex contracts, they are unlikely to be standard form. But I don't discount that there may be the, the, the uh, odd occasion where standard form contracts continue to prevail. The other point I'd make is that I have been a member of the Senate Economics Committee that have reviewed uh, this particular piece of legislation. And that committee has recommended that uh, 
um, uh, that uh, 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 a review process be uh, conducted by the government after three years uh, to ensure that uh, issues like uh, those that Senator Xenophon rose uh, could be could be dealt with and perhaps looked at to see if these definitions are working effectively. The second issue is around the definition of the threshold value in contracts, which has been set at $100,000 for an annual contract and, I believe, $250,000 for a contract that is longer than 12 months. And that did receive a substantial number of submissions to the committee on those levels. It is, it is clearly the case that those levels uh, would restrict a number of small businesses from being applied to this law, and I do share some of the concerns that that will unduly limit access uh, to these protections uh, to businesses that are otherwise small uh, but sign contracts above and beyond those particular threshold levels. Nonetheless, I understand the government has had to uh, come to some decision on this amount and indeed uh, has to have uh, ne had to have negotiate this amount with uh, various state and territory governments uh, around Australia, given it's an amendment of competition laws which are harmonised and uh, uh, are subject to a COAG process. Those thresholds, too, uh, in my view, should be part of that review after three years uh, to see uh, if um, it has unduly restricted access to this particular uh, uh, improvement in our law, uh, and um, in particular whether it has unduly restricted the ability of small businesses to take action in the courts because, as I said earlier, I do think this is one of the great advantages of this bill, that uh, we will expand uh, access to the law to a group of uh, entities that can have the incentive and, and at times the resources uh, to take legal action themselves. Um, but if these thresholds have, have, uh, have mitigated those potential benefits, I think they need to be and deserve to be re-looked at. But otherwise, I would like to again commend the government uh, for pushing this forward. Um, with the limited time available, I, I'd also like to comment briefly, as Senator Xenophon did, on the effects test, other aspects of our competition law, because these issues are all interconnected. As I said, I think we partly need these laws because our unconscionable conduct laws are costly and hard to navigate. Uh, we also, I believe, and have said publicly, we have an effects test. Uh, sorry, a section 46, a misuse of market power provision which is not working and certainly not used much anymore, or not used successfully at least for more than a decade, uh, and that needs fine-tuning as well. And we, have a very, we have some recommendations from the Harper Review in regards to that. Um, I broadly um, support those recommendations would hope to see that something is done uh, to provide uh, not just greater access for small businesses to unfair contract terms, but also greater access under the generic misuse of market power arrangements that exist uh, in our Competition and Consumer Act. I also finally note that um, uh, the Nationals Party Conference passed a motion on the weekend supporting that position, uh, and I hope that the government does uh, consider uh, these uh, issues as it responds to the Harper Review in due course. Finally, though, I'd like to repeat that uh, we wouldn't have this law, we wouldn't be making these amendments if it wasn't for the fact that the coalition government was elected uh, two years ago. It had been the policy of the Labor Party not to expand unfair contract terms to small businesses. Uh, they made arguments about that when, we, 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 when they, when they uh, put in unfair contract terms into our competition laws, saying that businesses don't need these protections, that they should only be uh, quarantined to consumers. I believe that view is wrong. I believe that uh, we should treat uh, many small businesses similarly uh, to consumers in our competition law. They should be protected because they can be, uh, not, they can be not only the ones that are the greatest victims sometimes from anti-competitive acts, uh, but they can also be the greatest policemen in making sure that more anti-competitive behaviour doesn't occur uh, than is needed. So I do compliment the government and, in particular, Minister Bilson for bringing this, uh, this amendment forward. Uh, for taking it through the various processes you have to do uh, to get competition laws changed in this country. It will be a substantial improvement uh, in our laws. It will be a greater protection uh, for the millions of small businesses that exist around Australia. And it is another uh, demonstration of how the Liberal and Nationals parties uh, support small business, want to see small business thrive, want to make sure that it's not just big business that is a protected species in this country, but that they are threatened. They are threatened by always and everywhere the uh, emergence of new businesses that have better products and can make sure that consumers have a diverse range of choice from those products. Thank you, Mr. Deputy President.